GITV would like to thank our sponsors, Condor Outdoor, G4 Airsoft, Contour Camera, Ares by Z-Shot, and KWA. Hi GITV, I'm Bob the Axeman Hildebrand and this is another episode of Taxville Gearheads. So, this is the rig I took with me to Lion Claws 10. I'm a big fan of that operation, I was at Lion Claws 1 as a squad leader and uh, had to do myself proud. So, I'm going to start with a gun. We got here an M4 CQB uh, by Classic Army. It's actually very similar to a lot of the guns we sell here, but the main reason I like it is because it's got a crane stock and a short barrel with a thread attachment. So I put any better I want in here, big, well, basically a big one so I can play all day. Got a really bright flasher on the front here. Got it in Tokyo. Don't know the name of it, but we carry some very similar ones on our website. Also have a rail on the top um, from Tokyo, hard to find. Got a suppressor, painted it, well, basically painted everything on the gun to match itself as well as my mask. So I can operate in desert or woodland environments. Now you'll notice in the video I have a grenade launcher on there for the first evolution of the day. Basically none of my grenades worked except for one and I didn't have any rocket rounds that would fire very far. So I decided to ditch it in favor of a grip pod and the suppressor. I kind of like it because I was able to move a little bit faster. It was a little easier on my left wrist. Uh, I did a little duct tape modification for the pressure switch and I wish I hadn't had uh, chrome duct tape. Um, that said, I'm trying to think of anything else uh, that I added on to the gun for the operation. I don't think I do, but once again, big fan of grip pods. Ah, so much easier, especially when you need to get prone. Uh, now this vest is a new addition. This is from our fighting CEO, Walter Chang's uh, cabinet, and uh, this is an OE Tech quick release plate carrier. Now I really like it because it's a lot lighter than the Cyraz that I originally just was thinking about wearing. So I put all my pouches on here. And I only have eight, M eight slots for M4 mags, unlike Tim who has like 14 or 16. I only have eight. So I don't normally fire as much as Tim, so I figured eight would do me right. And I also have uh, slots for two quick BB loaders. Those were very handy. I could load a couple magazines really quickly. Uh, I also have my pouch for my radio. Very important, especially in the huge <laughs> playing area we were at. One thing that would have gone exceptionally with a radio is a map. That would have been great because I could tell people a lot of information, but I couldn't tell them where I was. So we also have a vertical utility pouch. I believe this is Cordura. Uh, I was using this to hold my dead rag and my white rag. I was also using it to hold my nickel-plated TM Beretta, which you might notice when the video fell out, so I'm probably going to get, uh, instead of using this as a holster, I'm going to use it as a utility pouch from now on as it was meant to be used. Uh, my left pouch, which is uh, another utility pouch we saw on our website, I was, have, I was holding my G17 by KSC. I actually never got to use it because the Beretta was uh, doing pretty well that day. One thing I forgot to mention about my gun though is I had this handy, handy dandy uh, Mad Bull Noveski adjustable, adjustable amplifier flash hider. Hard to say, but basically it's a loudener for your gun. Uh, I put it on there uh, with my grenade, grenade launcher because I think it makes it look like some sort of cool battle rifle. Not really because it makes it sound uh, any cooler, just basically for the look. It is very helpful in indoor room-to-room -room battles because it does make your gun quite a bit louder, a louder snap. I also had a single knee pad. Uh, I didn't really think I needed both. I was just going to use my right knee for most of the day anyway. Um, I wanted to get a pair of Hatch X-Tac gloves or Hatch X-Tac knee pads like Tim did, but the week that we were going out to Lion Claws, we were sold out. So next time they come in, I'm buying some right away. I also had my handy dandy mismatched pair of tactical gloves. Uh, also, we got a new uh, True Spec uniform in today. I'm sure Tim had told you, but it's incredibly comfortable. Little uh, hard shell on the outside and soft shell on the inside. It's really comfortable. I'm probably going to buy a multi cam set today. Um, so let's see, let's go over more of the pouches I have here. I also have uh, two flashbang pouches right there, and I didn't use those for flashbangs at all. I basically use that for my Tornado Impact Grenade and my Airsoft Innovations Gas Can. Very helpful because I was refilling gas mags with this. I was also refilling the heck out of this Tornado Impact Grenade. First time I'd use that line claws, and it worked exceptionally. It was so great. Okay, uh, I was also wearing a multicam hat. Flip it around. There's actually mesh on the back, which was rather comfortable for me. Uh, now, on the back of my uh, plate carrier here is I've got a backpack that I stuffed this camelback inside of. Now, I didn't necessarily have to do that, I just kind of wanted to keep it looking cool, so I just stuffed it inside there and added a bunch of bags of BBs. Very helpful, especially when Tim ran out. Luckily, he ran into Zach. Um, let's see, grenades, pistol mags, oh yes! One point sling. I was originally just had this through my uh, through my armpit and over my shoulder. It was really 
tough on my neck. It felt like it was cutting my neck up. So what I did is I actually uh, attached it to the little drag handle on the back of this plate carrier right here and just wrapped it around and it worked perfectly. So uh, that's basically what I did. Um, I think at about uh, second evolution I added on um, a second uh, drop pouch or dump pouch. I had one on my hip and I had one on the back part of this vest. Uh, sadly I left that at home so I'll bring that bring that back. Now last but certainly not least I attached this wonderful little knife to my shoulder. I had a much tinier knife in my utility pouch uh, early on in the day but I couldn't pull it out quick enough to get my first knife kill so switch it out put this on my shoulder worked out exceptionally well and about 30 minutes after I did this got two knife kills. It was pretty darn sweet. Now just a quick note um, I, it's a personal decision, but I always decide not to bring my axe out to tactical milsim games because, to be honest with myself, my Nerf Warlock axe is not really milsim. So, what I'm going to do next time is I'm going to carry the knife, and I'm also going to carry my Nerf tactical hatchet, which I'm going to spray paint some milsim colors. So, be very wary, players. Um, I believe that's about it. It's pretty, uh, pretty standard gear loadout for me. Um, I'm going to be purchasing some new things, so hopefully with some more uh, Milsim operations to come, I'll have some more gear. I'm Bob the Axeman Hildebrand, and this is GITV. GITV is brought to you in part by Sig Sauer by Cybergun, Operation Line Claws Milsim Series, G&G Armament, KJW, and Javelin Airsoft Gunworks. Please use your airsoft guns responsibly. Do not shoot at any unsuspecting people or animals. Don't ever look down the barrel of your airsoft gun. And keep your finger off the trigger unless you're ready to fire. Treat your airsoft guns like they're real firearms.